This is the second of two Shakespeare masterclasses where Year 10 students from North London are studying Othello. In the first masterclass, they learned some key quotes by heart, tried their hand at writing blank verse, and studied the many dramatic possibilities of the handkerchief. In this second programme, students used props and a few key quotes to play literary detectives and piece together the plot outline of Othello. I hate them all. I hate them all. Who says that? Iago. Sequencing work on a key soliloquy follows. Uh, that, that's Make say so, him angry. Yeah. And finally, they get their hands on a copy of the play. They workshop a short key scene using the technique of forum theatre. Do not schneid. I have a thing for you. You have a thing for me. By the end of these activities, the students should be full of ideas and questions about Othello and hopefully confident about language and eager to study the play in depth. So we've still got quite a lot of the story that we don't quite have fitted into the jigsaw yet. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to play literary detectives. And some of you have got some lines written in front of you on card. But most of all, you've got some props here. And if you were a troupe of actors in Shakespeare's day, you would have arrived at the theatre, you wouldn't necessarily have known the story, you would have been given your speeches, and then you would have gone on stage and simply said your lines when it was your turn to speak. So just to begin with, put your hand up if you've got a clue about the play which you're pretty sure about. Put your hand up. Something about the story in the play. Mimi. Othello is a good man. Othello is a good man. OK. His world was turned upside down. His world gets turned upside down. It does. Anything else? Um, he falls in love. He falls madly in love. Who does he fall in love with? Right up. Desdemona. Desdemona. Um, I'm going to put the names up on the board because I'm going to give you the five main characters and from there we're going to start to use the props that you can see to piece together what we know about what happened to those people. All right? So, the first character, who is it? Othello. Now, say that word and tell me how it feels to say that word. Say it out loud. Othello. Othello. What kind of feeling does that name have inside your head, Othello? It's quite sort of aristocratic. It's quite like, it sounds quite special and kind yeah. of... Yeah, good, quite aristocratic. Who else do we know is in the play? Another character. Desdemona. Desdemona. Say that to yourselves. Desdemona. Now, what do we know about her? Othello falls in love with her. Yeah, he falls madly in love with her, she falls madly in love with him. Who else have we got? Iago. Iago. <coughs> have you ever seen a name like that? Say it to yourself. Iago. Iago. Again. Iago. What is that name? Some people say that they notice this. The I. I. Iago. Iago is an egotist. It looks like ego. OK? He is an egotist. He is the one though, that does not have the promotion he feels he should have, OK? He only has the ensign's cap, whereas a fellow has the general's cap and we're coming to somebody else. Cassio. Cassio. Everything falls into Cassio's lap. He's good-looking, he's not been in the army very long. Iago's been in the army for years and years and years. He's served Othello all his life. And when Othello was made general, he expected, Iago expected, to get the lieutenant's cap. And who got it? Cassio. Cassio. OK? A sweet-sounding name. One more person. Did anybody pick up? There's a fifth character, and it's a woman. It's Iago's wife, Emilia. OK. Let's see what we can work out about this play. Who would like to be the general? The general, a fellow. Go on then, Sinead. Who's going to be the lucky one at the first? Cassio. Jean-Luc? And we want someone energetic. He steers the whole thing. 
you be Iago. All right, so now we're going to just try and look at the props and we're going to piece this story together. You've got some quotes. What's your quote? I hate them all. I hate them all. Who says that? Iago. Iago, OK. He hates the Moor because the Moor promoted Cassio and not him. Where does this play take place? Mediterranean. The Mediterranean. Yes. yes. No, who's got the second quote? Who's got the quote that begins reputation, reputation? Reputation, reputation, reputation. Oh, I have lost my reputation. Fantastic. Who do you think says that? Maybe Othello. You think, well, you're right, you know. He loses his reputation. He loses everything, but it's not him who says it. Somebody else loses everything. Who's that? Cassio. It's Cassio. Cassio loses everything. Would you like to give Cassio's cap to BJ? Right, put that on. Cassio loses everything very early in the play. He's been promoted. Have a look at the props, please. What do you think happens? What could have happened? Liam? Um, he has a drinking problem. He doesn't actually have a drinking problem. He doesn't drink, usually, and he can't hold his drink. But Iago, who knows everything and watches and understands people, Iago gets him drunk, cos he hates Cassio. Cassio's got that cap. He wanted it. He gets Cassio drunk. What happens when people get drunk? What's one of the first things that happens? or often it happens? Look at the clues. You could hurt someone else without really meaning to. Yes. Look, you get into a fight. And that's what happened. Iago got Cassio drunk, Cassio got into a fight, a riot broke out in the officer's mess, he started to attack somebody with his knife, he nearly killed them. Othello comes in, because Iago tells him, he's absolutely outraged, he sees what's happened, and he takes, he sacks you. So give me back your cap. And then you say, you realise you've lost everything. And what Iago does, Iago, where are you? There you are, you're sitting there, you're watching and listening which is what he does in the play, Iago says to Cassio, don't worry, you go and beg Desdemona to give you back, for your husband to give you back the job. And as soon as Cassio did that, Iago said, ha, I like not that. And that was Iago pointing out that Cassio was talking to Desdemona and started to sow the seeds of doubt into Othello's mind. OK? Eventually, we know... Iago got his hands on this hanky, and it had belonged to Desdemona. He'd given it to her. It was his only gift. Othello had been a soldier all his life. Part of Othello thought, why did she fall in love with me? Here I am, a much older man. I'm not from the same city as her. I'm not from Venice. Perhaps she's already got tired of me. So, Iago, you knew that, and you knew how to sow the seeds of doubt. OK, huge row breaks out. He says to Desdemona one day, Give me my handkerchief. She can't find it because Amelia has taken it. It dropped to the ground. Amelia found it. She knew Iago wanted that hanky. She had no idea why, but she gave it to him. And then when Othello asked for the hanky, it wasn't there. He began to think, it's true. And, Iago, you also said that you saw Cassio wiping his beard with it. Big row. Who has got the quote that starts, alas, the day? Um, could alas, you... the day, I never gave him the cause. Who do you think says that? Um, Desdemona. Desdemona. After the argument, OK? Now, a lot of this play takes place where? Bedroom. Bedroom. Can you see the bed? And in the bedroom, they have this row. She can't find the handkerchief. He asks her where it is. She can't find it. And he's very, very rude to her and calls her what? Who's got the next quote? She turned to folly and she was a whore. Yes. When the language gets violent, then the actions get violent too. What do you think happens with this? Lizzie. He kills her. How do you kill someone with a pillow? Smother them. Right. Othello leans on the bed and presses this to her face and kills her, cos he's sure she has been unfaithful to him. And his mind has just tipped, OK? He's already... He's kind of gone. He's lost control. Um, but Amelia comes in, who's extremely strong and feisty, and she understands in a moment what's happened. And she's just about to say, I realise what it is, I gave the handkerchief to Iago, my husband. I know what's going on. When the door bursts open and in comes Iago. Emilia is about to spill the beans. He runs at her 
and kills her, she falls dead on the bed with Desdemona. Who's got the last quote? Dying, Amelia says... More she was chaste, she loved thee cruel more. She loved thee cruel more. And then Othello realises what he's done, and in despair, he takes the sword, he kneels on the bed, he kisses Desdemona, he says, I kissed you before I killed you, and then he leans on his sword and falls and dies himself. And that's the tragedy of Othello. OK, so we've worked out the plot, you've looked at single lines, and now we're going to look at a whole speech, OK? And what Shakespeare did in a lot of his plays was that he put soliloquies, which are long speeches by a single character. But the character is on stage alone. And they speak a speech which is a kind of thinking aloud. And the thinking aloud is often a working out of a problem. It's often a kind of wrestling with an idea. And in this play, one character has lots of soliloquies. Who do you think it might be? Put up your hand. Jean-Luc. Iago. It is. Why do you think Iago might have so many? Because he's angry with Othello and he's, he's got so many thoughts going around in his head, he just needs to get them all out. Yeah. And Iago... Do we need to kind of know his evil plan? Because it's quite a complicated evil plan. Absolutely. So. You're thinking like a playwright, aren't you? We need to know what's going on in his head because he is the machine that drives the plot. OK? So, Iago has lots of soliloquies, and we're going to look at one of the soliloquies, and we're going to look at the soliloquy where Iago has the handkerchief in his hand, he's alone on stage, and he's working out how this is going to turn a fellow's world from a heaven into a hell. OK? In Othello's knapsack, there are green, red and white lines, all cut up. So get your lines, I want you to spread your lines out, and as a whole group, you've got about five minutes to try and sort out the lines so that they become a soliloquy that makes sense to you. Right, that's got a full stop, so you think that's possibly at the end. OK. That's yeah. yeah. That's true. That I did say so. You might ask yourself, I wonder what finds, sounds more fine. That's together. like, I'll make him more angry. No, I did say so. It does sound like it. I'll make him more angry, and then that's explained how he's getting him angry. Yeah. You're right. It, there is a finality. I did oh, say so. Maybe that goes again as well, because yeah. they seem to go together. Yeah, because that's it. Yeah. How are you getting on? You're absolutely right to pay attention to the punctuation. That's the meaning is often there. So read, read what you've got already. The, what could come after the colon? Yes. Well done, Charlotte. Read it. The moral already changes with my poisons. Dangerous conceits are in their nature, but nature's poisons. And then saying that it doesn't seem that big, but jealousy is something big. Just made you something. So that's like, like a final bit, is it, yeah. for you? Read it through, as it is, one of you. The more mind already changes with my poison, I will, I, poisons, I will in Cassius lodging, lodgings lose this napkin and let him find it. Trifles light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong. As proof of holy wit, this may do something. Dangerous conceits are in their nature poisons, which at first are scare found to distaste. But, with a little act upon the blood, burn like the mines of sulphur. I did say so. Beautifully read. Well, I think it works. OK. Would everyone like to just uh, face this way? Before we look at what Shakespeare did with this soliloquy and the way that the sense he made of it, I know you've all made your sense of it and it's worked. Anything any group noticed when you were working it out? He seems he seems quite horrible when he uses the word poison. It's it's quite an evil word. Yeah. And like he's willing to go that far to completely ruin his life to get what he wants. Yes. It's an image, isn't it? It's like lies, deceit. Excellent. What about this group here? Anything you noticed before we look at what Shakespeare did? Um, he seems at the end he says I did say so, which kind of gives you the impression that he will be proven right. 
because I guess he kind of wants to make it clear that he does know what's right and he will, what he wants will happen because I guess it didn't happen earlier on in the play the way he wanted it to. Ah, it's quite chilling, isn't it? Those last tiny words, I did say so. And very often in Shakespeare's speeches, it's not the big words, it's the tiny words which are important. OK, let's see how Shakespeare did it and if there's anything else we notice. OK, have a look at that. I will, in Cassio's lodging, lose this napkin and let him find it. You can reorganise yours if you want to. Trifles light as air are to the jealous confirmations strong as proofs of holy writ. This may do something. Now, at that point, that's a little stage direction, isn't it, to the actor? What do you think the actor would do when he reads that line? This may do something. He's found the handkerchief. So maybe at that point, he's holding it. This may do something. He's working it out. The more already changes with my poisons, dangerous conceits are in their nature's poisons, which at first are scarce found to distaste. At first, these lies didn't affect Othello. But, it's a little word, with a little, act upon the blood, the poisons start to affect you. Burn like the mines of sulphur. I did say so. And you can imagine that being really quite a shocking end. OK? So he's worked out the power of this handkerchief. He's worked out what he can do with it. OK? Like to leave your soliloquies there and come and sit around this map of the world. OK. So I think it's about time we did a little bit of acting out a scene, don't you? You've got the plot in your head, you've got the characters, you know about the language, and uh, we're going to try looking at that scene just before the soliloquy where Amelia hands the hanky to her husband, Iago. OK? Um, before we do that, Shakespeare wrote all of his plays in five acts. OK? And the turning point, the very turning point of this play and of all his plays happens right exactly in the middle. That's how clever he is. Now, if you've got a five-act play, which is the middle act? Act three. Act three, act three has five scenes in it. Which is the middle scene? Scene three. Scene three. OK. I'm going to ask you, in a minute, to go to Othello's knapsack, which is there, and you're actually now going to get a copy of the play. Um, and you're going to take the play, and I want you to find the very middle of Act 3, Scene 3, and then tell me which page you think it is. So go and get a copy of the play and come back as fast as you can. Don't trip up over the props. Right, who's going to find the very middle? Tell us what page it is. 82, 77, 73, 82, 72? 72? No, a little bit more. Any advances on? 83 is the page. The almost the middle. Give or take a little. OK. Now, what we're going to do is something called Forum Theatre. This is the forum. And this is the way that possibly Shakespeare's players might have set themselves up just before they were ready to go out on the stage. OK? You didn't know the whole play through at all. You'd learnt your lines, and you're going to play through a scene. That's going to be your only rehearsal. We're going to play through the scene between Amelia and Iago. Amelia has found the handkerchief, and I would like somebody to be Amelia. Come along, Amelia. You've got a handkerchief. Could you please hide that somewhere on yourself? You're in the bedroom. You've actually found the handkerchief. It's Desdemona's bedroom. Let's say you found it on the floor by her bed. So you could um, just drop it there. Now, we need an Iago. Iago is pretty nasty, OK? You've got to be ready to be a little bit brutal, Jean-Luc. Now, all of us, we're the audience, but we're actually the directors. We're going to be watching, aren't we? And if we have suggestions 
we're going to give them those suggestions when they get to the end of this little scene. So, um, I think you're in the bedroom on your own, first of all. OK, so you're just doing a bit of clearing up. And we'll count you in, three, two, one, and play it. You're clearing up. Mm. How now? What do you hear alone? Do not you shide. I have a thing for you. You have a thing for me? This is a common thing. Huh? To have a foolish wife. Oh, is it that? What will you give me now? For that some handkerchief? What handkerchief? What handkerchief? Why not that moor first gave to Desdemona? That which so often you did bid me steal? Has stolen it from her? No faith. She let it drop by negligence. And to thy advantage, I being here, took it up. Look, here it is. A good wench. Give it to me. So, everybody, directors, what do you think? Is she going to just let him take the hanky? No. no. Would you like to have it? Mimi, you got a suggestion? I think she'll play with it in front of him, kind of be like, oh, it, she knows it means something to him, so she, but she won't give it to him because she knows it's going to play with him. Play with it a little bit, OK? Uh, Iago, what do you think of your wife? I think she's annoying me a bit, and I want that hanky. Yes. <laughs> and are you going to put up with any silliness? No. She might be flirting with you a bit. Are you interested? Not right now. Right. <laughs> I have other things on my mind. OK. <laughs> this time, everybody, you're noticing for anything that you might want to have said differently. So you could say stop. Yeah? And you won't mind. How now? What do you hear alone? Now, now, Iago. Is that the way Iago's going to say it? He's a bit cross, he's walked in, he's found her in the room on his own. Well, how's he going to say, how now? How now? How's he going to say it? <laughs> hmm? Well, well, can you show us? Like, how now? Yeah, even angrier. Who can say it even angrier? How now? How now? <laughs> how now? Oh, right. Uh, now, I would like you to get up. Would you mind, Jean-Luc, just give your hat to this chap here, please? VJ, you get up there. I think VJ's in a bit of a mood. He's going to be an Iago for a moment. Thank you, Jean-Luc. Take a seat. Um, Right, how now, what do you hear? And Amelia, what are you going to say? Um, do not snide, so maybe kind of trying to calm him down because yeah, okay. I know those. So, a nice bit of explosion. In you come then, please, Iago. Should I have my back to him? So yeah, I'm... you're piddling around again, yes. <laughs> One, two, three, go. How now, what do you hear alone? Do not snide, I have a thing for you. You have a thing for me? Okay, is it, it is a common thing. Ha! <laughs> To have a foolish wife. Right. Now, that's good. I think you get the joke immediately. You're telling me a dirty joke and you back down a little bit to have a foolish wife. I wasn't really saying, yeah? OK. Keep going from to have a foolish wife. To have a foolish wife. Oh, is that all? What will you give me now for some that handkerchief? What handkerchief? What handkerchief? Why? That that the moor first gave to Desdemona. 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 <laughs> that which so often you did, you did bid me steal. OK. Directors, we need to give Amelia a note here. What's she a little bit of advice? What should she be doing? Playing. Playing around with the handkerchief. OK. Who'd like to just be an Amelia? Could you do a bit of playing around with the handkerchief? So, uh, why don't we take it from her, Amelia? Huh? OK. Huh? To have a foolish wife. Oh, is that all? What will you give me now? For that same handkerchief. What handkerchief? What handkerchief? Why that the moor first gave to Desdemona, that which you so often bid me to steal. Has stolen it from her? No faith, she let it drop by negligence. And to their advantage, I being here, took it up. Look, here it is. A good wench. Give it to me. What will you do with it? That you have been so earnest to have me filch it. What is that to you? Right, stop there. That was great. Now, at some point, has Iago got his hands on the handkerchief? No. No? no? You don't want to play it like he's got the hands on the handkerchief, he's got his hands on the handkerchief? And she teases him and she says... What would the line be where she says, what will you do with it, that you've been so earnest to have me filch it? Yeah? Maybe yeah. at that line you pull away. So, Iago, just before that, a good wench, give it to me. What do you think he should do? at that point. Grab, Grab it. it. Right, BJ, <laughs> would you like to take Sorry. it again? So, um, a good wench, give it me. A good wench, give it to me. What will you do with that now you've been so earnest for me to filch it? Why, what is that of you? If it be not for some purpose of import, 
give it me again. Ooh. Poor lady, she'll run mad. No, when she look, left everybody. You. There's a stage direction in there. Shakespeare's put. What is it? Mimi? Give it me again. Give it me again. So what does that mean? He has it. He's oh, already so he got it. it. Do you see the stage direction that Shakespeare's given you? A good wench, give it to me. BJ. A good wench, give it me. What will you do with it that you've been so earnest to, to, uh, to have me filch it? I don't think that she's going to be looking so happy. All right, so a bit more anxious. So take, give it to it. Look, right, go again. Give it me. Oh, a good wench, give it me. What will you do with it that you've been so earnest to have me filch it? Why? What is that to you? If go it on. Be, if it be not for some purpose of import, give it me again. Poor lady, she'll run mad when she shall lack it. Be not a no-no. <laughs> good. <laughs> go on, go on, get it off her. I have use for it. I have use for it. Go, leave me. Good. Off you go, say your soliloquy. I will in Cassio's lodging lose this napkin and let him find it. Trifles light as a autogelous confirmation strong. As proof of holy writ, this, this may do something. What? This? This? This may do something. The more already changes with my poison. Dangerous conceits are in their nature's poison. Which at the first are scarce found to distaste. But will little action upon the blood burn like the mines of sulphur? I did say so. Okay, very good. Thank you, well done, what a performance, fantastic. And you've got your way through the key scene, the turning point of the play, where this trifle, light as air, manages to throw Othello's world into chaos. And you've also worked out the whole of the tragedy of Othello. Excellent, give yourselves a clap.